and turn it over to Jess Knudsen. All right. I am Jessica Knutson. I'm the Secondary Transition Coordinator with Northern Lights Special Ed um, Cooperative and also part of Northern Lights Interagency Council. And we collaborated this year um, with the Interagency Coordinating Council Duluth to offer parents um, some informational presentation sessions on preparing their child for life after high school. And today's topic is looking at preparing your child with an intellectual disability for post-secondary education. And we are honored to have Katie from Minnesota Independence College and Community, Kim from Bethel University, and Patty from Central Lakes College here to speak today um, about um, their programs that they um, offer. So if um, at any time through this video, which we will have recorded, you can access on our website and then any presentations that they have, you can also access on our landing page, um, which is linked here in this presentation, but it's also through www.nlsec.org. Um, so without further ado, we're gonna start our presentation today with Katie. Awesome. Hi everyone. My name is Katie Saklacha and I am MICC's Associate Director of Admissions. We're very thankful to Jessica and Shannon and the Northern Lights Special Education Cooperative for having us. Um, it is wonderful to be here. So I will be sharing some information about MICC and our programs. I'm gonna share my screen. So MICC is a nonprofit uh, organization. We are located in Richfield, Minnesota, with, which is just south of Minneapolis. Uh, we are celebrating our 25th year and we hold an accreditation through CARF International. So we have a very unique campus and that we are tucked into a large apartment complex and have several buildings nearby in the area. Our programs focus on social and emotional education, vocational education and learning, and also independent living skills and learning for young aut autistic adults and those with learning differences. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, actually play a video here and I'll let Evan, one of our graduates of our programs, uh, tell you more and give you a better idea about what our campus looks like. And hopefully, can you see it on my screen? Perfect. All right. Oh, I'm being a little slow here. One second. I'm a graduate of MICC. Let me tell you, half the stuff I do around here, I never imagined I'd be doing around here. Part of our school's success comes from a non-traditional campus. We have classrooms located in apartments, homes, and businesses here in the local community. Ever since MICC is founded in 1996, we've been here at the Colony Apartments. We've converted two buildings into offices and classrooms. We have three programs, college, careers, and community. We're gonna start with college today. Behind me is our Welcome Center, where our admissions team meets with potential students and their families. And across the street, we have Donaldson Park, a key facility we use for exercise, leisure, and getting acquainted with nature. Our students use the park for team building, walks, picnics, and fitness electives. Looking good, Evan. Don't forget our fleet. Oh yeah, for some activities, we have a fleet of MICC vehicles for student and participant transportation. Above admissions is our advisory center. Each student in our college program is assigned an advisor whose job it is to help guide our students on their journey through independence. Sometimes it's done through one-to-one -one meetings in a sensory space or a media room with the guidance of an advisor. Let's head over to our main building now. Hey, Amy. Hey, Evan. That's Amy, our executive director. She's pretty smart. That's what the script says, but she is pretty awesome. Hey, 
This is one of our busiest spaces here on campus. On either side of me, we have student common areas. Upstairs, we have administrative offices. The student center is where people hang out in between work and classes, doing everything from hanging out with friends and watching TV to doing stuff on your own like puzzles. Our computer lab offers regulated access to the internet. The transportation classes meet in here and go online to plan bus trips. And the personal finance classes often meet in here to balance the checkbooks. All right, everybody, today in budgeting and banking, we're going to be working through different money scenarios. This is one of our main classrooms. During the day, we learn about independent living skills and social skills. But at night, well, we're still learning skills, but in the form of cooking for each other and playing games. Wait a minute. Evan? Yeah? Haven't you taken this class before? Yeah. Would you mind taking your tour outside, please? Of course. Let's go. Speaking of outside, this is our private, beautiful courtyard donated and built by our awesome community. Out here, we have classes, bonfires, and our gardening club meets here. And the vegetables and herbs they grow are used in our cooking electives. At the back of the building, you'll find another classroom, more hangout space, and a craft room. Students in the college program learn to live together by, well, living together. We live in an apartment like this one for the whole school year. It's the perfect amount of space for four people, most of the time. We're always learning in these apartments, whether it be independent living skills, such as cooking and cleaning, or what we call an apartment circle, which helps roommates understand each other's wants and needs. Learning to live in an apartment is a big step. It can be a little scary at first, but it's worth it. So when we're not going to classes, going to the mall, hanging out, cooking, cleaning, hiking, making art, playing music, playing board games, playing hockey, sledding, starting clubs, building computers, making movies, finding world domination, riding the bus, grocery shopping, doing laundry, helping our neighbors, meeting with our advisors, or spending time by ourselves, we're working on careers. So we're going to head over to the Career Center. That's just two blocks this way. There are several career certificates you can earn here. Retail, culinary, hospitality, and health services. But don't worry about making that choice all on your own. Inside, you'll meet with staff, including full-time job developers, who will help you find the best fit for you and your abilities. They work really hard to build partnerships with local businesses nearby, like Best Buy headquarters right over there. For the Career Certificate Program, we practice work skills at practicum sites around the city. And we prepare for those in career center classrooms, like this one. And you can go to the staff offices for support from career staff. They'll help you with searching for a new gig or with maintaining your current one. You can even do a mock job interview here. For the culinary certificate, students learn food prep here in this industrial kitchen here at Wood Lake. Mmm, that's hot, but very delicious. Since graduating the college program, I decided to participate in the community program, which offers participants sports services, social activities, and a wonderful space to enjoy. Hey, how's it going? Evan. Hey, John. Emily. Hey, Bradley. We're pretty friendly around here. Anyway, once you've joined, you can participate as long as you want. Your whole life, even. This house is the center of the action. Oh. This is the main level of the house. We have couches and a TV. We have a meeting area over here. We have internet access. And we have a kitchen. There's also a band practice room and a small fitness studio. Our community specialists are here upstairs. They meet with each of us on a regular basis. So no matter where you are on your journey of independence, you'll find the support you need at MICC. And that's our tour. We hope to see you very soon. Bye for now. Hey, it's going. I'm just giving this virtual tour. All right. So, um, Evan. Um, graduated from MICC a couple years ago, um, and we were lucky to film that, of course, pre-COVID. So um, we hope you enjoyed the tour and got a better sense of, of what our campus is like. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time 
um, talking about each of our programs a little bit more in depth. So as Evan mentioned, we have our college careers and community program. Our college program is uh, probably our, our most well-known program. We operate like a college in that we have a semester-based schedule. Our students will take specific classes in each of these different curriculum areas. So social and emotional learning, career readiness, independent living, healthy living, team building and community, and socials and electives. So students will have a core set of classes that they take in each year of this program. It's a three-year program. Um, and then in addition, have the option to select different hobby-based electives and socials. The goal of our college program is to help our students develop skills in each of these areas so that when they graduate from the program, they can live um, independently um, and also pursue employment and graduate. Uh, our goal is always to have our students graduate with employment. So here's a sample of what a first year course schedule could look like for our students. Um, so you could see some different courses in those curriculum areas like menu planning, transportation, budgeting and banking, some different electives. And we have other things like you saw in the video apartment circle. So helping uh, roommates understand wants and needs and expectations for their apartment. So a lot of learning is happening in the apartment setting itself with our curriculum and also out in the community. So really uh, at the core of our programs, it is intended to be experiential learning. We have four career certificates. These are certified by Century College. We deliver the curriculum, but um, Century certifies them on an annual basis. So students really in their second year of our college program select to pursue a certificate. That training happens on our campus and also out in the community at one of our employment partners. Upon graduating, students will receive a transcript from Century College that uh, outlines those continuing education hours. And here are some um, just important uh, things to know and statistics from our careers department. Um, again, we always focus that 100% of our seniors are employed by graduation. Uh, for the last at least five years, that's been over 95%. The average uh, rate of retention, so how long our students are employed uh, with a particular employer is three years. Um, things have been very unique with COVID, but we are very um, excited uh, to report where we are currently um, and on track to um, help our seniors obtain employment. That really happens in the third year of our college program as they progress in their coursework. They begin in their senior and last year working one-on-one -on -one with a job developer to ultimately practice interviewing, resume building, and uh, ultimately placement and ongoing job coaching. And then after graduation, our uh, graduates have access to our lifelong community program. So as you saw, that uh, program has access to a great community center space, to over 40 uh, social activities per month, and then ongoing supports. So um, independence for every student looks different. Um, and so that may mean that, that some uh, graduates may just want access to our social program and others may want ongoing support from our staff in ongoing independent living skills coaching, wellness supports, um, and different service areas. So we have a, an entire catalog of service. So no matter um, what a graduate is looking to receive, they can access that through our community program lifelong. And I also want to mention we do have a summer program. So this program is specifically for um, young adults that are ages 16 to 23. We have a week long um, summer program op uh, option in June and July. It is a really good taste of MICC's programs and to get to know our staff and our campus. This year it will be a day program option um, and the morning will focus on career skill building. Uh, we'll have different tours from um, industry professionals and different guest speakers. In the afternoon, it's focused on social and emotional learning and activities. It's a great way for people wanting to know more about MICC and getting a good introduction to us. So what are our requirements for admission? This is specifically for our college program. So for individuals looking at our college program, um, who will be a fit? It will be 
students between the ages of 18 to 26 when they start the program, have a diagnosed learning difference, autism, or another neurological difference, have a full-scale IQ of above 70, and we do ask for a neuropsychological evaluation, and really have a desire to be at MICC, to want to learn how to live in an apartment setting, to obtain employment, or their goal might be to go on and pursue other academic schooling after MICC, um, but have a desire to be on our campus. And the process for admission, so if you watch this presentation and you're interested in learning more and connecting with us, you can go to our website, it'll be listed at the end, and you can click to schedule a one-on-one -on -one, um, tour visit with us. We are hosting those in person um, and uh, virtually. We then have an application process, we ask for some materials, and then we conduct an interview. So what does the program cost? We're very um, lucky at MICC as a nonprofit to be able to issue significant financial assistance for our students and their families. So we have a need-based financial assistance program. It's not connected to FAFSA. It's important to note our students do not qualify for federal financial assistance, but we're able to cover up to half of the need through that application process. So we issue over $400,000 a year in assistance to our families. Also, um, through county or state funding sources, um, those sources may be used towards uh, the cost of MICC. So for instance, uh, in Minnesota, for individuals that are eligible for a waiver, there's something called CDCS services, which you may be familiar with. That funding source can be used for our program costs. So we've been approved for that through the state. So that's really changed um, accessibility to our program. And similarly, um, for those that are eligible for Social Security or SSDI, that can be used for room and board. So over 60% of our students and their families are using both our assistance plus other sources to really reduce their out-of-pocket costs. And so what does it cost? Um, so our, our tuition costs include all instruction, all groceries, all transportation costs, um, all activity costs. And so that um, expense here you'll see is uh, over $50,000. So it's a significant expense, but again, with our assistance options, um, most, uh, if not all, students and their families are not paying anywhere near this cost. All right. So now I'll leave it just for a few minutes with questions and I know we'll head on to the next presenter. Or did you wanna leave questions for the end, um, Jessica and Shannon? We can do either or. I just had a question about the summer yeah. program. So for people that don't live near where you're at, what are options then to um, stay down there overnight? Or That's a great question. So um, historically, our summer program has been an overnight option. Um, with COVID-19, we changed the format um, because we didn't uh, uh, we wanted to make sure we could safely deliver it in person. So this was this alternate format this year. We do have many um, summer program participants who are able um, to um, stay nearby at an Airbnb or family, or we certainly have hotel recommendations. We know that that can be really tough for most people, um, but unfortunately um, with COVID-19, that's um, what the option looks like. Great question. Any other questions before I hand it over to Kim? Wonderful. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Well, I am Kim Bethke. I am the Office and Admissions Coordinator for the BUILD program here at Bethel University. Um, I don't have a fun slideshow like Katie did, but I am envious of her slideshow. So um, anyway, BUILD is a two-year comprehensive residential transition program here at Bethel University. Um, so our students live on campus in integrated residence halls. Um, their first year, they would live in a traditional freshman dorm. So their neighbors on any side of them might be from anywhere, not in the BUILD program, um, but they're direct roommate would be in the BUILD program so that we can provide support as necessary. 
In their second year, we are moving them into apartment style buildings here on campus, um, still keeping that support there, but obviously transitioning them into learning how to take care of bigger spaces, um, learning how to cook more meals, learning how to just interact differently with their space. Um, like I mentioned, we have supports in place um, because we are nestled into a university and very much so integrated into a university. Um, we have the natural supports of resident assistants, resident directors, but we also have build residential supervisors who are, I'm gonna call them build RDs. And then we have housing mentors who are like build RAs. Um, so those housing mentors are taking classes alongside them. They are going along through college with them. Um, and one of the big pieces of our program is that peer support. We want to develop those natural supports in their lives so that when they leave college, they know how to form those connections with um, people of all different abilities, all different ages, um, people with different interests. So that is one of um, our core pieces here at BUILD. Um, those housing mentors also will help connect them to the social events here at Bethel. They'll help with cleaning and cooking and all of the pieces that might be a little bit new um, for our students and um, just really helping them get integrated into our community here at Bethel. Um, because of its size, Bethel is able to offer us the ability to really get our students connected with all of the different social events. So our students have access to all of the clubs. They have access to participate in theater, to go watch theater. They can be part of our orchestra, part of our choir. Um, they obviously have to go through the same um, stages of participation. They have to apply for certain things. They have to go through interviews. Um, all of the pieces, but it's really fun to watch them um, be part of the plays and to go support them and see them just thrive in those settings. Um, we have students who have competed on our Bethel sports teams in track and field and cross country. Um, and then obviously students are here at Bethel for a college education as well. Um, and so our students take our build core courses and those courses are independent living skills. Um, we have a course called um, independent study and that is where there's time to do homework. There's time to really explore different career options. We have some students right now who are learning how to make doggy desserts, which is super fun. Um, so just the opportunity to explore all of their different options. Um, we also have jobs and employment to work on that employment skill building. Um, and with that, we have internships. Um, I'll talk about that in a little bit, but those are our build core courses. We also have um, a Bible and theology course because um, Bethel is a faith-based institution. So faith is integrated into all of the different pieces of our um, program. But alongside our build core courses, students are able to take what we call elective courses. And those are traditional undergraduate College of Arts and Sciences courses that are taken at a developmental level. So we really focus on the participation piece of it. So they're not having to do, like if a student is in psychology, they don't have to write a 30 page research paper, but they are taking the quizzes. They are um, interacting with the material. Um, and it's been really, really exciting to see our elective courses grow. I believe we have over 40 different elective course options. Um, and so just like how we have students integrated into residence halls, we want students integrated into different courses here so that it's not only build courses, but also those integrated courses, the electives. Um, and when we do that, when we provide the integration, we also provide the support. So we have student mentors in those courses who are taking the class alongside the students. Um, and they will host hour long study groups every week to make sure that all of the content is being covered um, just in case students aren't fully grasping a concept or even just to provide a space where they can ask questions that maybe they aren't comfortable asking in class um, and to have fun. I've heard a lot of students actually be really excited for study group, um, which makes me excited. 
Um, and when students graduate from our program, they are given a certificate in applied studies. We have three different career pathways. There is human services, arts and communication, and then business. And for all of those, the students would work with their um, academic advisor to figure out what courses are needed for the different career pathways. And those career pathways can also change, but it's just different options for our students to focus on and to put on their resume. Um, and then one of the last main pieces of our program here is the internships um, and that we have a progression through the different semesters of our program. So our first semester, we're really focused on helping the students understand their skills and understand their strengths. So they'll take a bunch of different um, strengths assessments and all of, I don't even remember all of the different things, but they take a lot of different assessments to figure out what am I actually good at? Where do I wanna go in life? And how can I really work on developing these skills that I naturally have? Um, and obviously our main goal in all of this is to find meaningful work for our students so that they're not feeling limited in just working at a certain um, employment skill level that maybe they've been told before that they need to stay at. So our goal is to really dig into what they want to do. So anyway, first semester is job shadowing, skills, assessment, all of those pieces. And then second semester, we'll move into an on-campus internship. Pretty much anywhere that um, traditional undergraduate students here can work, our students can work. Um, and when they are working there, they would have job mentors, which pretty self-explanatory. They are just like all of our other peer mentors in providing support for our students. Um, our goal is that by the end of the second semester, the job mentors have worked themselves out of a job where our students no longer need support in that way and they can just go be under their supervisor and do the work. Um, and that has worked really well for us. And then our third and fourth semesters, we really want to push students to get an off-campus internship. And with those, we don't necessarily have a list of different internship options that are available. We really go based on what the student wants to do and we make those connections um, as quickly as possible and wherever we can. We've had students work at Boston Scientific, at David's Bridal, um, local coffee shops, um, flower shops. We have students interested in Disney right now. So we're trying to get them connected to different Disney shops. Um, so it is really exciting for us to watch students Feel like they can start advocating for themselves to say no I really want to work here and that's when we know that we're doing the program right is when they're like no I don't like my internship right now so next semester let's work on something else um, and like I mentioned before we are a Christian university faith is included in all of the different aspects um, and we've had people ask questions about that and I am super open to that um, everyone is at a different point in life and that might mean something different to everyone. So feel free to ask questions about that, obviously. Um, after graduation, all of our students are Bethel alum. So they get access to our, um, I lost the word, our wellness center. Um, so it's a beautiful facility, so many different options for working out, for joyful movement. And we have different classes that they can attend there. Um, they are always welcome back. We have students actually who've graduated from the program who now work here at Bethel. Um, so it's fun to get to see them in the hallway. Um, with regard to our application, it is a pretty standard application. Um, we do have students apply the December before the fall that they wanna start. So if a student wants to start in the fall of 2021, they needed to complete their application by December of 2020. Um, in the application, we don't have an application fee. Um, we do require a Special Olympics physical form, IEP and eval report, um, the most recent one as possible. And then two references, one from church and one um, just from school. And another important piece to know about our program is that the IQ requirement is actually 79 or below. And that is due to our financial aid reasons. Um, we are able to use um, 
FAFSA, we're able to use a lot of different funding sources. Like Katie had mentioned, using waiver funding has been life-saving for some of our families. Um, using VRS, um, Voc Rehab Services, really any funding source that you have questions about, we have been able to work with, um, which has been such a blessing. Um, and again, students need to be between 18 and 26 um, when they're starting the program just to be able to stay within our housing requirements here on campus since we are an undergraduate university. Um, that is all that I have. And I feel like I definitely spewed a lot of words out. So if you wanna ask questions now or wait until later, I'm fine with whatever. Um, I have a question. If you have, um, with the, the, the students that you, you go there, if they are returning home for the summer, will you help them apply for like a summer job so that they have somewhere to work when they go home for the summer? That's a great question. Yes, I, um, I don't know why speaking is so hard today. Our um, internship coordinators are wonderful at working with our students. So if that is a concern, we have a lot of students who really need the money or just need the experience, then yes, our coordinators would definitely help apply. Great question. Any other questions? All right, then I can turn it over to Patty. Hi, I'm Patty Sloan and I'm from Central Lakes College in Brainerd, Minnesota. And um, I work with the Occupational Skills Program and we are a nine month program. I'm gonna share a little um, PowerPoint with you today um, that gives further information that we can kind of look at together. So all right. Okay, so um, we're um, one of actually two programs in the Men State system. And so um, the other program that's um, part of, uh, that's another occupational skills program is located in um, Wilmer at Ridgewater College. And uh, we're both nine month programs. We're um, technical programs. Our goal for, for all of our students is entry level employment upon completion of the program. Um, our courses, um, they focus on independent living because that plays such a key role in success in a job. And we're fortunate we have a kitchen um, that we cook in right within our classroom. And we also have a laundry room. So all of our students, if they don't come with those skills to do laundry, they um, do a test out. And then once they've done that test out, they can do their laundry at the college for free, which is awesome because that is certainly an added cost when you're living away from home. Um, so um, students can earn a diploma upon successful completion of the program. Some of our students do go on to other programs after OSP. So um, it just depends on what they're interested in doing. Some people just totally go with the nine months and that's enough. Um, and others get exposed through our um, elective courses to areas that they might like to um, pursue further education. And some examples of that could be um, with an AA degree, it could be um, welding, child development, horticulture. It just kind of depends on the interest area of the student. Um, so our classes are um, communications, employability skills, study skills, uh, computer basics is taught by our computer department. And then um, critical reasoning skills is like a life skills class for us. And then supervised pre-internship, and that's the worksite component of our program. Um, all of our students do take two elective credits outside of our program, a minimum of two credits. And um, they can choose 
what area they might like to um, have a class in. It, it does depend. Some of them have some uh, prerequisites in regard to reading and math levels. So our students do take the AccuPlacer test here at the college and um, to kind of help determine if um, a class would be an acceptable class or if maybe they need to um, maybe take something else before they take that class. It just depends on the student and their interest area. Almost, I haven't heard anyone complain about their choices of um, what they've been able to take. And then that way too, if they are planning on going on to more schooling, then they have those credits that can get transferred right into um, to other coursework. So um, the supervised pre-internship, that's kind of a big part of our program. We have um, the students work 12 hours a week to gain work experience in an interest area that they are interested in. So we have about 50 different um, organizations and businesses in the community that work with our students and um, have worked with our students for many years. And so um, we go through at the beginning of the um, school year and we go through all those lists and um, just let them know what types of jobs are available there. And then they get to choose their top three picks and then um, they would get to um, hopefully get two of the three, one fall semester and one spring semester. So um, the students do take uh, public transportation to their work sites. If um, it's not close to campus, we've had some students who come to school with a car, which is just fine. Um, sometimes they're able to walk depending on where they're working at. And then um, students are always monitored and kind of guided by OSP staff. We provide job coaching as needed, um, but most of our work sites already have in place certain mentors um, that are available for our students. But we do, uh, we make regular visits um, to the work sites to make sure things are going well for the student and um, work on any problem solving as needed. Um, we have most of the, um, job sites that we have fall into the area of custodial food service, um, retail, warehouse manufacturing, and then entry-level childcare and nursing homes. And we've been affected with that um, last one just because of COVID that we haven't been able to place students as much in those areas. And um, But we do have one place that has three of our students at a childcare center, which is awesome because they all have um, aspirations of working in childcare um, when they're done with school. So that's been really nice. Um, our admissions process, um, we um, have students apply after September 1st for the following fall. Um, the, and we don't have an age limit for our program. So um, we've had anywhere, I think the oldest um, student that I've worked with I think she was 38, but otherwise they're in generally about like 18 to 23-ish, um, but we don't, um, we don't have any um, like age limit with, for us. So um, what the student would do is they'd fill out the application, they can fill it out online and um, we don't have a, an, a, any fee that goes along with that. Um, they would just wanna make sure that they put in occupational skills um, as their program choice on that. And then after our admissions program or our admissions department processes that, then they get a phase two packet. And that just asks for more information. Like we need to have documentation of disability. And then there's like a general um, information sheet that they fill out. Um, if a student has a guardian, then we would ask for guardianship paperwork, um, like court papers for that. Um, after we get all the materials back, then we have a meeting with them and just kind of go through their information. We always want to make sure that they really, really want to come to the program. Um, we've found that sometimes if they feel forced to come, then um, it's not always very successful for them. So um, we just go through the pro or the um, information and then um, I always, I never turn anyone away, but just after sharing that information, it's a matter of um, do you think this is the right place for you? Do you really, really want to come? And, and if they say yes, then, then we go proceed to having them accepted to the college. 
Um, we do not have supported housing. We do have some um, housing that's available. It's student housing that our foundation owns. And so students are invited to um, check that out for a potential um, living situation. It's just on the west end of our property. So it's very walkable over to campus. There's also apartments that are not necessarily um, student related, but um, there are students and there's families and just community members that live right across the street from campus. It just depends on where the student wants to live. We do have some students who live in some supported situations. Um, or maybe they're just not ready to have an apartment just yet. Um, most of our students, they get an apartment with at least one or more of um, another OSP student while they're here. And that's kind of nice. And we've also gone the other route too of, um, we've had a student live like with all nursing students. Um, and it's been a good experience for them too. So it's it's a matter of choice when you fill out the application, especially with the student housing. Um, a lot of our students have um, semi-independent living skills people that help them after school hours, and that's usually funded through their home county. And so it can be anywhere from one hour a week to four hours a week. It just depends on the student need um, for that. Um, and we also want the students to experience a full college experience. Um, so um, we do have a requirement that all of our students participate in at least one club of their choice. And there's a list of just some of the ones that are offered and there's new ones that come up every year. There's um, a trap shooting club and a fishing club, chess club, um, in addition to some of these that are listed. And then um, we also encourage students to um, participate in sporting events or um, be an observer. Uh, or spectator um, theater productions, whether they're helping with a theater production or actually acting in the theater production. Um, we have students that have been involved with um, music, uh, with choir, band. Um, they, some have taken private lessons and they do um, performances that way. And then our student life department is um, very active offering many different opportunities for students and I always try and make sure that um, students are aware of things going on on campus they also get emails um, just saying hey this is going on and so um, but we really encourage the students to um, get that full college experience and not just hang out in our classroom but um, get to know other people on campus. Um, financial aid um, students should definitely fill out the FAFSA form. That's, um, you can find it at the CLC webpage. Um, they should explore opportunities with scholarships from their high school, if they're still in high school or local civic um, organizations. Um, CLC also offers scholarships through our foundation. And then um, the cost for our program is right around 12,000 for the nine month period. And um, that includes uh, tuition, books, and housing. Um, this is just an information link page. Um, that top one, there's a video that's um, available. And then um, it just kind of tells it, interviews some of the students and it has some nice information if you want to check that out. Um, the website for our um, CLC um, information about OSP is also listed and then there's a housing link and then if you would want to take a tour of the college um, we are able to have people come to a campus we also offer some monthly zoom um, information meetings if you're interested in that that's just my contact information and then my co-worker there's two of us in our department and we're We've been both very healthy, so we've been able to be face-to-face, -face, and so that's a nice thing for our students. And that's my last slide. Does anyone have any questions for me? I just have some general questions for the three of you. One is, um, I was wondering, is there a cap on the number of students that can enter into your programs every year? 
Um, I can go with that first. Um, we, because of COVID, we're at an 18 number um, right now. So um, I think next year for sure is still that 18 number. Great question. So um, next fall, we will be taking 24 students into our college program. We are limited every year um, because of housing. So we have 16 student apartments and each um, houses four students uh, per apartment. And so um, as we continue to acquire um, apartments, our, our capacity may change, um, but every year we do have a, a number um, based on that. So it's 24 in the fall. Yeah, for us, we do have a cap set at 18. Um, I would say generally we accept 16. Oh my goodness. I have a light sensor. Should make things fun in the recording. Um, yeah, so we usually accept 16 students around there, but our cap is at 18 because we really want students to be ready for our program before we accept them in. And then I was just curious on the level of independence um, that you would envision a student having to be successful in your programs. Could you just share maybe some of the skills or things, you know, if we have students transitioning from high school that have utilized a paraprofessional or if there's behavior issues or um, things like that. I can go on that one first. Um, yes, we do not have one-to-one -one, um, support at Bethel. Um, we really encourage students to be advocating for themselves, um, to be able to ask for what they need, to really want to be independent. Um, so generally, if a student has had one-to-one -one support, um, we'll ask more questions about that just to see, um, is that needed? Is that just something that might feel more comfortable, but is not actually needed? Um, but yes, we also can have students use PCA support. We have a couple of students right now who, if they need help getting dressed um, because of um, maybe just not being able to do certain things, um, they can use PCA support. But that's one thing that's actually very important about our program is that we do provide support up to a certain level. And that is usually like, I'll wake students up in the morning um, for the first couple of weeks. And then after that, nope, we're working on getting a better alarm clock for you. We're working on, you know, setting up all these different supports. So the level of independence is, I would say fairly high, or at least we're working towards that. Um, but those are always conversations that we're ready to have with families. Cause we know that that will vary um, student by student. Um, the ratios of classes at MICC, so our apartment-based classes, uh, like menu planning and um, grocery shopping and cooking, um, those are a one to four ratio with, with roommates. Our other, some of our other classes are between um, a one instructor to seven to nine students um, is about our ratio. Um, we, uh, similar to what uh, Kim was saying, um, we are looking for students that are able to um, bathe themselves or complete daily hygiene tasks. Now, that doesn't mean that's not maybe without prompting or visuals or other supports, but to be able to do that, that task. Um, also, to be able to, to uh, walk to and from different spaces on campus safely, um, have some understanding of pedestrian safety and rules. Um, we're also uh, looking for students who would have the ability to lock and unlock their apartment. Um, we are not a 24-hour supervision campus, so our staff do leave after they complete um, uh, rounds. We do have a curfew, so we are um, making sure that our students are safely back into their apartments every evening, but then our staff do leave, and we have an emergency on-call number. So if there is um, a particular student who would not be safe in that environment, um, they wouldn't be yet ready for um, a program like MICC. Um, so those are some of the, the uh, particular safety skills um, that we're looking um, that a student would have in place. Mm -hmm. At CLC, um, we really stress time management with the students. Um, so 
like from the get go of when I first meet somebody, I tell them about how important our attendance policy is because we only allow two times of unexcused absences because in general in the first 90 days, which is about the amount of a semester, if a person was gone more than two times unexcused at their work site, they probably wouldn't have their job any longer. And so that's why we really stress um, and we worked with our advisory board about that, that that's what they really want. Um, so um, that time management piece is um, something that they'd want to be aware of just being here um, so that they're here for attendance. And then um, just in general, like some basic um, like cooking skills so that they can eat healthy. We cover that in our um, classes, but um, just having an idea of good nutrition, if they, you know, the most that they can do. And I always tell people beforehand, it's like, cook for your family once a week and um, figure out, you know, what are some easy things. And we do talk about just like economical, healthy things they can eat. But um, I think the other thing is um, just um, like we, we ask like, and if the student is able to uh, be employed by the end of this time, they might not have all the skills to start with, but um, some of the skills that you would need, just like the bathing, um, you know, keeping their um, laundry, uh, you know, doing their laundry so that they are looking good and smelling good while they're coming to school. Those kinds of things are things that we would expect for the students so that they would um, be successful and transfer that to a job situation too. Okay. 